On the 26th July, with the heat baking the black paint that covered the lower half of Jenny's front window, a window that had been smashed in some dozen times since the establishment was founded, Corella and Danny were not interested in the crossing the social barrier aspects of Jenny's bistro. They were interested in a man called Louis Dizzy Ordiz, who may or may not have pumped a total of six bullets into a total of two cops. I haven't done one of these re-edit rewrites in a little while, but this was so clunky and awkward that I thought I'd give it a go. The first sentence is so scatological, it's hard to even make out what the point of it is until you read the second one. I think they're so closely linked that this full stop should be a semicolon. One of the semicolon rules is that if you can replace it with the word because, you're probably using it right which is definitely true here. So much so that I think the only reason McBain didn't use it is because of how horrible and jumbled this sentence already is and that adding that would make it only more so. I also think that this is quite fixable. Just be cutting out this clause here and that leaves you with this. On the 26th July, with the heat baking the black paint that covered the low half of Jenny's front window, a window that had been smashed in some dozen times since the establishment was founded, Corella and Danny were interested in a man called Louis Dizzy Ordiz, who may or may not have pumped a total of six bullets into a total of two cops. But I also think that it works better like this. With the heat baking the black paint that covered the low half of Jenny's front window, a window that had been smashed in some dozen times since the establishment was founded, on the 26th July, Corella and Danny... Additionally, without saying when Jenny's Bistro was founded, it is kind of irrelevant to say how many times the window's been smashed. Is this once a week, or has it been open 50 years? Granted, it sounds a little like a grim place either way, but we can take it out and not lose much, or make it a bit clearer with less. With the heat baking the black paint that covered the low half of Jenny's Bistro's regularly smashed in front window, on the 26th July, Corella and Danny entered. By ending the first sentence with the verb the added emphasis makes it clear what the point of this sentence actually is. This is so weak that after all that setup, it feels like a dependent clause left hanging. I still feel like it's clunky enough to warrant another pass. Here's what I'd go with. With the heat baking the black paint of Jenny's Bistro's regularly smashed front window, Corella and Danny entered, looking for a man named Louis Dizzy or Dees, who may or may not have pumped a total of six bullets into a total of two cops doesn't hurt to reinforce the ever-pervading heat, but the strength of this passage is this bit that summarises why they are there and reiterates the stakes. I want to get to it quicker without leaving anyone questioning my punctuation or grammar. The repetition here also works quite nicely. So that was how I'd rewrite it. It's more succinct and nothing of real value is lost. However, writers tend to get the hump if you do that to their work, and nobody would write anything as awful as this without meaning it. So this is how I'd re-edit it. My goal is to restore the connection between these two sentences and trim this section here to get to that bit a little bit quicker. So here's the original again, one more time. On the 26th July, with the heat baking, the black paint that covered the low half of Jenny's front window, a window that had been smashed in some dozen times since the establishment was founded, Corella and Danny were not interested in the crossing the social barrier aspect of Jenny's bistro. They were interested in a man named Louis... Dizzy or Dees, who may or may not have pumped a total of six bullets into a total of two cops. And here's my tidy up. The heat was baking the black paint on the lower half of Jenny's regularly smashed front window when Corella and Danny entered on the 26th of July. But they were not interested in the crossing the social barrier aspects of Jenny's bistro. They were interested in a man named Louis Dizzy or Dees, who may or may not have pumped a total of six bullets into a total of two cops. A slight tweaking of the first sentence makes it roll a little nicer. It could have cut out at least the adjectives or written the first clause as the heat was baking the paint on Jenny's front window, which for brevity I'd like to, but I suspect the words black and low were used for their negative connotations, so I've left them. I've used regularly here because it makes the point clearer and because my ultimate goal was to make this shorter. I've connected the time preposition back to the main clause of the sentence here, while having that main clause allows me to use a full stop here. Then I can connect these two sentences with a semicolon, and I've reduced four distinct parts of the original passage's first sentence to three, making it move quicker and smoother. And while before it was awkward grammatically and thematically, now the two sentences both have 
clear intent. First is to reinforce the theme of the heat wave. The second is a reminder of the stakes. As ever, feel free to post your own attempts in the comments. Cop Hater is not really a book guilty of dragging its heels or bloat, so there's no reason not to just get on with this bit a little bit quicker. I have a review of the book on the channel, so by all means, if you're interested in it, check that out. If you're interested in my books, then check out Professor Lovecraft on Amazon. It is full of science fiction and silliness, and you can find examples of that too here on the channel. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye. My name is Riley and I'm a student. The first two weeks at Sexington University were perfectly normal. I was drunk until the end of freshers when my student loan ran out. Then Professor Lovecraft exploded his lab and my eyebrows and everything changed. My roommates started dying. Aliens invaded. I killed a dragon over breakfast, got stranded in the past and attacked by dinosaurs. I might have committed a genocide. I might have robbed an empire. I may even have saved the world. I really hope next week is quieter. I have an assignment due.